this video we'll talk about arithmetic sequences. If a fixed constant is added to each successive term, then we have an arithmetic sequence. So here's the definition. Given a sequence of a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, these are just the different terms, all the way up to the nth term, where k and n are natural, notice I said natural, we talked about that in the last video, numbers, and k has to be less than n, then if there exists a common difference such that a sub k plus 1 minus a sub k is equal to d for all k. So then this, if that's true, we have an arithmetic sequence. So what in the world does this mean? This really just means take the second term and subtract the first one, a sub k plus 1 minus a sub k. So you're going to take negative 2 minus 1, and that's going to give us negative 3. And we're going to take negative 5 minus a negative 2, which is really plus 2, and get negative 3. And negative 8 minus a negative 5, which is really plus 5, so we have negative 3. Or negative 11 minus or plus 8 would give us negative 3. Negative 14 plus 11 is going to give us negative 3, so the common difference is negative 3, and this is arithmetic. So we want to write the first five terms in arithmetic sequence given this information. Well, we know we have a sub 1 is equal to, and I'm going to rewrite this because it's kind of hard to see it, so I'm going to write it as 1 half, and d is equal to 0.25 or 1 fourth. Well, we know the first one is 1 half, and then we have to add 1 fourth to that. Well, this is really then 2 over 4, so we have 3 over 4, so 3 fourths. And then now we have 3 fourths, and we again have to add 1 fourth, so that's nice. We have 4 over 4, or just 1, and we have to add 0.25 again, or 1 fourth more. So if we take 4 over 4 and add another 1 over 4, we're going to have 5 over 4. And if we did it in fractions, that would be fine. It did it in decimal, so it would really be like 0.5 and then 0.75 and then 1, and this would be 1.25. So you notice in the sequence that we just did, the common difference was 0.25. We added 0.25 over and over again. And repeatedly adding the same number is really just multiplying that common difference like this. We start with a sub 1 and we want zero common differences. We need it to stay 1. So this would be 1 plus 0 is 1. Well we can start with that first term again but this time I would like to have one common difference and that would give me 2 times 1 plus 1 or 3 but this is the most important thing that we're looking at right here is what what is happening right here. So we take our first term and we add to that now two common differences. And if I have my fourth term, I would take my first term and I would add three common differences to it. So what does that mean in general? Well, I take my first term, whatever that is, and I add to that my common difference, and then we have to figure out how many of them we need. Well, if you look at this, for the a sub 1 term, I needed 0. a sub 1, I needed 0. a sub 2, I needed 1. a sub 3, I needed 2. a sub 4, I needed 3. So do you see the pattern happening here? How did these two numbers compare? 2 compared to 1, 3 compared to 2, 4 compared to 3. a sub n would be, I'll put it over here, this would be a sub n and we're letting this be, if this was 1 and this was 0, 1 less, 2 minus 1 would be 1, 3 minus 1 would be 2, 4 minus 1 would be 3, so we're going to say n that's that little number down there, minus 1. We need one less common difference than the term number. And that's what we're going to say is our general form formula. a sub n, let's put it up here again, is the first term plus our common difference, whatever that is, times n minus 1. So we want to find the general term. Well, what do we need? We need an a sub 1 and we need a common difference. Well, a sub 1 is always your first term, so we know that's 7. They gave us our first term, so we're good. And then d is, remember, we're going to take 4 minus 7, and that's equal to negative 3. And we double check. We take 1 minus 4, and that's, again, negative 3. And if I look at it, it looks like 1 plus negative 3 would get me to negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 3 would get me to negative 5. So it looks like my common difference is negative 3. Then we have here a sub n is going to be equal to our first term. 7 plus our common difference of negative 3 times n minus 1. 
Well, in your book, they're, wanting, they're going to want you to take it just a little bit further. So they're going to want you to say 7 minus 3n, distribute the negative 3, and then negative 3 times negative 1 would be plus 3. So they really want you to say that a sub n is equal to negative 3n plus 10. There's your nth term. So the second part of this problem says find the sixth term. Well, that means we want a sub 6. So negative 3, and then we put our 6 in here because that's the n, and then plus 10, then that would give us negative 18 plus 10, or a sub 6 is going to be equal to negative 8. You may notice that when you look at these general terms, they look very linear. And Common that difference is actually equivalent to the slope of a line. Now I want you to understand something, that n is a natural number. And in linear, this would be y equal mx plus b. And x is a real number. Okay, a sub n is like my y. And n is like my x. But the, this is just a term number. And this n is not all reals. It's just natural numbers. So if I were to go and graph this, this would be, the line would be y equal negative 3x plus 10 a sub n would be this point and this point and this point and this point and this point. So a sub n equal negative 3n plus 10 are just points. There's a difference. Linear the line, sequences are just points. Okay, so now they're going to ask us to find the number of terms. So we need to know what that n is. Well, we know that a sub n is equal to 42. And remember the formula again, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus your d times n minus 1. Well, let's plug and chug what we know. a sub 1 is 4. And then plus d, but we know that to be 2. And we don't know what the rest of that is, n minus 1, because we're going to try to solve for n. But we do know on this side what a sub n is equal to. It's equal to 42. Okay, so we just plugged in what we knew. Now we're going to just solve the equation. I am going to simplify over here. 42 is equal to 4 plus 2n minus 2. So 42 will be equal to 4 minus 2 would be 2 plus 2n. Subtract the 2 to get it to the other side. So I'd have 40 is equal to 2n. And if I divide by 2, I find out the n is equal to 20, which means 20 terms. And this says find the nth term. We know the n is 20. So a is 20. 4, which is a sub 1, plus 2 times 20 minus 1. And we should get 42 if we did this correctly, because we already know what a sub n is. So 4 plus 2 times 19, and that's going to give us 38 plus 4, which is going to be 42. So we did it right. So what else can we do with these arithmetic sequences? Again, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. Keep that in mind. Find the common difference d and the value of a sub 1 given all of this. a sub 5 is equal to negative 17. a sub 11 is equal to negative 2. Oh, wow. We don't really know a whole lot here, do we? So let's see if we can alter what's going on here. Let's say that we wanted to start with a sub 11. Okay, And I have to plug in as much as I can and then find one variable. Well, I want to fi first find that common difference. So I can say this is equal to a sub 5 plus, if I have a sub 5, a sub 11 was bigger. And how many more common differences did I need? I needed six more common differences. And that's really because we started with 5 plus 6 will equal 11. This was the fifth term. I needed six more common differences to actually be at the 11th term. Now let's plug and chug what we know. a sub 11 is negative 2. a sub 5 is negative 17 plus 60. And we're trying to solve for d. Well, add 17 to this side and you're going to have 15 is equal to 6d. And dividing by 6, we have 15 divided by 6, but we can reduce that, which will make the next part easier. So if I reduce that, they're both divisible by 3, so d is 5 over 2. Now what do we do? we got all kinds of things we can do. But we kind of thought about this a little bit before. I could say that I know, let's say a sub 5, because it'll be smaller. I don't know what a sub 1 is. And I do know what my common difference is. That's 5 halves times 
I have a sub 1 and I need a sub 5, so how many common differences do I need? I need 4 of them, okay? Or 5 minus 1 would be 4. So let's plug in what we know. a sub 5 was negative 17. I could have used negative a sub 11 here as well. It really doesn't matter which one I use. a sub 1 is what I'm looking for, plus when I multiply here, I'm going to have the 4 and the 2 cancel each other to have just 5 times 2 or 10. And if I subtract the 10, then I know that a sub 1 is equal to negative 27.